So welcome back guys. Now I'm going to try something a diff bit different with the video. Um, I'm going to sort of do is to start on an end to it. So the aim of this video is to explain and show you um, how to change your injector seals, what the air shrouding system is and what it does, um, and how the injectors are, can get quite dirty. So you'll see in the video and the pictures of how dirty mine was, how clean they were, how I've tested them, um, and an overview of how the system works. So. Hopefully, by the end of the video, everyone can understand the mysteriousness of the air shrouding system, which is pretty good actually, for for what it's how it's made up and designed. It's a pretty pretty smart system. So, let's get on. Hello. Right. What I'm going to do is do a video on the injectors. I'm just getting ready to put the injectors, and I've got one in and all the new um, top hats. Um, this is a K jet, obviously um, K jet air shrouded. Now the air shrouding. Is made up of these parts. You've got this bottom bit, these always fall apart. Um, you'll struggle to get them out unless you um, remove the lower part of the manifold. Um, so you have this part and the a rubber seal, but this is a square sided seal. And this is a brass it clips into that bit there, like so. And then you've got the injector with its top seal, and it, the camera's not going to zoom in very well. And the bottom seal. Now that sits. Uh, that sits inside like so. Now what you do have, if you can see a hole there, where it is, that little hole there, that sits inside where the inlet manifold is and around this sort of area on the inlet manifold where it sits, this air comes into here. Now what the air does, because once the injector is inside there, it's sealed, so the air hard to explain this there you go so the injector sits in there and it's sealed and sealed and the air comes in through the brass housing and inside the orifice around the injector and inside there and then what it does well, I've been cleaning these out because they are were blocked um, I try and get a point you can just see it on the end of on the end of the top hat on these is a little like a top hat there's high and low parts this is not going to zoom in you just see the difference there in the light. There's a low part and a high part. Now what the air does is actually come down and go inside there. Now I got the feeler gauges out because I actually needed a feeler gauge to actually shove down there and clean out um, a 0 0.15 mil is the thickness I've been using, which is very thin. So the air goes down there and then it comes in. I'll put some pictures up so you can see after. This won't zoom in, never mind. Right, yeah, it comes into the larger part. Just sit there. Comes into the larger part, then moves across, then comes out of the lower part. Now what it does is when the fuel is spraying out, um, with the air shrouding, you've got literally a shroud of air surrounding the fuel that comes out, which basically helps to atomise the fuel better. So instead of larger droplets coming out, you've got a finer mist coming out. Um, and as we know with engines, um, the better the fuel is atomised, um, the better it will combust. So that's what we're doing at the moment, it's just cleaning these out, um, making sure they're clean. And what I've done is just rigged up another special tool, bit of hose, bit of hose, airline. And that is sitting over the top of there, tightening over that seal. And once I've scooped it out with the feeler gauge, as I'm then just putting that over there and just shooting it through to make sure it's clear. Um, it mainly improves its emissions and sort of low engine running um, throttle response because if you've got, with the KJ, if you've got low engine running, low fuel, not low fuel, but not a mass amount of air going over, you want the fuel to be atomised as best as you can so it gets a nice even sort of tick over and run. Um, you can you can do away with these if not, and there's, I definitely don't know which models got rid of them. Um, but they're on there, so I'm using them. Um, so there. So yeah, I'm just cleaning these out. Once they're all cleaned out, I'll be putting them in the cylinder head, um, and then I can start working on the lines. Um, so yeah, I'll just take. I'll show you a picture on this. I'll show you on the cylinder head, one of the ins or the inserts in. Right. So this is where the injectors sit. If you can, I don't know if you can just see. Let me get a pointy stick. You won't see it in the light. I stick that up in that hole 
and then put the torch back on it. Right, see where that pie's going. That's the whole gap there. And that tube, that tube that sits there is um, the airflow into it, which is that. So yeah, it sits inside there and screws in. Um, if you look across, I've got, there's your new inserts. Um, they're all in there. What you need to do is need some form of sealant around that thread because that goes in, that rubber seal seals against the inlet manifold. The injector sealed inside it from the top and bottom. What you haven't got is anything around the threads. Um, and it says in the Bentley manuals and from in the Bosch manuals that needs some form of thread lock or sealant. All I've been using is right, cheap, cheap and cheerful and simple PTFE tape. Um, perfectly good enough. Um, I'm reluctant to use any thread lock in there because if they need to come out again, you've got brass versus aluminium versus whatever chemicals in a thread lock. Um, and the old ones were very hard to get out. Um, they do come out just by hex bits sits inside there. Um, like that type of thing, sitting there, screws it out. Um, so all I'm using is PTFE tape round there, making sure you keep it away from that area. And thread it in, and then they're torqued up to 15 newton meters, I think. So that's those. They're not expensive. They're the most expensive bit. Um, they're only a couple of quid. Again, the seals are. And then that's just um, seal again. Another seal. That's the ones out of my box. Make sure these are fuel resistant seals if you're going to source them elsewhere. But they're cheap enough to buy online. Um, if you're wondering, that's just a cap, just so I can. Because I've cleaned the injectors out. I don't want anything going in the top of them, so it's just a random cap to go on there. So I'll take some pictures, better pictures of the head top hats of these. Um, and I'll stick some other diagrams up to show you how the air shrouding works, etc. Right, installing injectors is pretty simple. That's the injector ready to go in. All I've put is a bit of um, WD-40 oil type stuff or engine oil on the seals just so they don't catch and tear. Simple of just pushing it in. Give a little wiggle to it sits in. And as soon as it sits flush, you can feel a bit of force. All you need. There you go, it's in. And all you want. So that's nice and sat in there now. And all you want is the orange seal. Not orange. There's my torch. Show you another one. Um, doodly doodly do. Where that little ridge is in the other one that's not going to inject her in. About there, that's where the seal, you can feel it sort of plop and sit into there. So that's one injector, nicely installed. Clean the other four, three out, and then I'll stick all the rest in. So as you can see here, the air is coming in where I'm indicating on the higher raised section of the top hat on the injector. And from then, it shifts sideways a touch and comes out of the lower sections, surrounding the fuel that's being discharged from the injector, giving it the shroud of air. And this is one of my top hats, as you can see, the ridge between the top hat and the injector body is full of crud. And this all comes from the air filter, or a dirty air filter, 30 odd years worth. And that is what came out of it, it's about a 5p piece sort of size. Now it's nice and clean, already and breathing through. Now this picture, this is a non-shrouded air injector. And as you can see the larger droplets of fuel in there, so it's non-shrouded. And the next picture sheet is with it shrouded. And as you can see, that's like a mist of fuel. And that can mix with the air so much easier to give a nicer, even combustion. This is how the air shroud system works on the injector. So, as we know, that nipple point there, which connects to the chamber, which starts there and goes across the inner manifold, that goes onto this hose, which comes off the vent point from the cylinder block along the hose. This hose attaches to the top part of the air box, which is filtered air. And on the engine's induction stroke, when the piston moves down, it draws air in. It draws air from the top of the air box, through that tube, through the nipple, into that chamber, which then fills the area around the injector. And again, as the piston's going and draws air in, it then draws air across through that top hat, shrouding the fuel that's going in. So that's how the system works. So, in conclusion of that video, that is all my injectors cleaned. And refitted with new seals, new brass inserts, new lower um, caps, an overview of how the air shrouding system works. So if you've got any comments or any um, 
anything just stick it in the comments below or if you head over to my facebook page grey goose restorations i'll stick some pictures of this up on there feel free to comment etc one thing i didn't note before or well, two things actually um the feeler gauge i said i was using to clean out the top hats um was 0 0.15 an inch um not mil not that matters anyway it's just something to clean it um if you're going to change your seals it is i would advise to change the bottom caps as well because what you can happen if you've got the bottom cones you've got the small red cones you pull the old injectors out you're then changing a the seal because they're getting their plastic they could be 30 years old but they probably are 30 years old they're going to be brittle so when you put a fresh seal and you push it in there the bottom of that cap can split open and what happens then you're going to get particles gone inside the engine I doubt it would do any damage to the engine, it would make a mic back a bit of noise. It is plastic versus metal, so I wouldn't thought it would do any damage. But what you will then have is a massive air leak going across one of the cylinders. Because you've got four equal amounts of air going through the top hats into the cylinders. If you've got a broken red sort of lower cone, you've got one of the cylinders that's got a hell of a lot more air going through than the other. So that one cylinder is going to be running lean, um, which is not what you want. So for the cost of it, you'll have, probably have to take the lower part of the inlet manifold off to remove them safely. But again, it's not a lot of bolts, it's quite easy to do. So um, yeah, that's just a one little helpful tip on those.